Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. You can probably tell we're in a little different setting than normal. In uh, just a few minutes, I'm going to be speaking from this very podium in this room to about 60 clients, uh, just doing a little dinner recap from our New York trip and presenting kind of some of the, the findings and, and conclusions from this week, uh, a way that we had meeting with all of our uh, asset management partners in the world's greatest city of Manhattan. Um, and so because we're set up here and getting ready to do this event, we figured we'd go ahead and tape Dividend Cafe for the week as well. Uh, I really love this week's Dividend Cafe. I um, think that the subjects that we cover in the written version, in terms of a couple insights into the Federal Reserve, um, a little bit more nuanced view at where some Trumpian policy uh, effects may very well be demonstrating a positive impact in markets, but different than maybe some of the normal places people are looking. Um, there's some very interesting data around China and, and just overall a lot of charts this week and a lot of subject matters covered that I really love and I, I comment sometimes that I really love writing it every week. I love the material. We try to do a very good job to make it informative and actionable for clients and digestible, and understandable, and all those types of things. But um, every once in a while, there's one that I just think really hits home, and this week I'm very happy with it. But let me summarize for you uh, who are watching the video, maybe don't necessarily be, read the, uh, the written version, a couple of the insights that I'm going to be talking about this very dinner in a few minutes. Coming out of the New York trip, I really want to reiterate our risk posture right now. We do not plan at this time to be making any significant asset allocation changes. We do plan to be rebalancing our client portfolios to their target allocations. Um, and, and we suspect that, for example, emerging markets up 30% on the year, rebalancing back to the target level where people were at the beginning of the year is likely going to sell off some of that emerging exposure, but we're not lowering the weighting that a given client may have started with. Somebody may have had 3%, somebody else may have had 8%. But my point being, as far as our relationship between stocks and bonds, we don't plan any significant increase in, in our or, or decrease in any of the asset classes. But our risk posture right now is very much that we want to be defensive and guarded. And yet the way in which we plan to execute in that defensiveness is not necessarily in reducing stocks. We're very keen right now on the idea of not equating stock market and risk as the same thing as if there's no risk in a portfolio apart from our exposure to equities. We want to de-risk our bond portfolio right now. The term I'm using is boring fi the portfolio. More bonds that act like bonds, even if we don't expect to make great returns there, providing a diversification benefit in our client portfolios, taking on some interest rate risk, but lowering the credit risk, lowering the risk on, risk off dynamic that has existed in some of the credit markets, high yield, floating rate, bank loan, emerging debt, et cetera. Um, I think that overall, we see reasons that this market could very well continue to go higher. I, I really believe this. The question should not be, why is the market still going higher? You have low inflation, you have low interest rates, you have accommodative central banks all over the world. The question is, why wouldn't the market be going higher? You have global reflation, positive economic growth in every country on planet Earth at the moment, and frankly, you have profit growth that has uh, ex exceeded expectations. However, I would say that there are, is a point in the monetary cycle that we may be entering, whether it be Mario Draghi in Europe beginning some form of mild tightening and tapering, obviously our own central bank slowly increasing interest rates, preparing to reduce the balance sheet, albeit at a very mild pace, whatever new personnel may be coming into the Fed, there are reasons to be cautious. But the number one reason that people say to me is, geez, the market's just so high. I don't think that's a very good reason. I do think that where we are in the cycle warrants caution and defense. So we're very cautious. Um, we, we like the positions that we have. We've been moderate or moderately defensive for some time. We, we intend to continue with that. Very keen right now to the Federal Reserve personnel expecting an announcement from President Trump, if not next week, perhaps the week after. 
Um, I believe it's possible that Chairwoman Yellen will be reappointed. I would not be betting on it. Um, the futures market or surveys of economists are suggesting that, that current Fed Governor Jerry Powell is the most likely to get the nod. And Mr. Powell is certainly a very qualified and competent economist, probably ideologically more in the vein of Chairwoman Yellen. Um, I'm a huge fan of Kevin uh, Walsh. I believe he is um, a serious contender. And even if he doesn't get the nod now, I believe he'll be perhaps appointed elsewhere on the governor board and perhaps a future uh, candidate. I don't know what to make of John Taylor, who's an incredible economist I've been reading for a couple of decades out of Stanford University, a Hoover Institute fellow, um, famous for the Taylor Rule, which advocates a stricter rules-based form of monetary policy. And I know the president interviewed him this week, but I, I, I don't believe that it's going to go that direction. But my point being with these different ways it could go, we think the market could respond one way to various people, another way to others in the short term, and different ways in the long term as well. So it's a big theme we're watching right now. We really like our equity exposure. We don't want to exit and cost clients money from very good defensive positions just because we're afraid of mild downside volatility. We think we can de-risk portfolios in other parts of their account. So that's what we're working on. Any further questions on that, reach out to us. I got to let it go. We have uh, uh, people assembling here for the event tonight. Um, but please uh, feel free to email any questions, readdividendcafe.com. And thank you so much for listening.